Chances are, we're going to find life beyond Earth by 2035, and there's no need to travel to a galaxy far, far away. Our Milky Way galaxy is full of totally suitable environments. Don't get too hyped up, though. We're talking about microbes or chemical markers, not Hollywood-like green humanoids. Even so, when we finally find traces of life, it will change how we see our place in the universe. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope discovered something incredible. Almost every star has planets, and many of these planets might be habitable. Rocky planets like Earth and Mars are even more common in our galaxy than gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter. Also, we already know that our galaxy is very rich in water. There's water in interstellar clouds where stars and planets form, in the debris disks around other stars, in comets, just everywhere. What's really hard, though, is finding life itself. Ideally, to finally find it, we need to land on every single planet out there and literally check under each rock. But thanks to the newest research, we can at least narrow down the search to potentially habitable worlds. The James Webb Space Telescope, a super powerful telescope that was launched into space in 2021, is onto this. It checks the atmospheres of nearby super-Earths, rocky planets that are a bit bigger than Earth. It searches for life-related gases, chemicals that can only be produced by living things. And they already found some clues. For example, they detected signs of such a chemical on a planet called K218b. This planet is 120 light years away, which is pretty close on a space scale. This planet is in the Goldilocks zone, which means a zone around the star where the temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist. It orbits a red dwarf star, the smallest type of star there is. Such stars are a bit fainter than our sun. It will take about a year to check if these hints of life are real. If so, it would mean that life is much more common than we previously thought. But even if it's not, there are 10 more Goldilocks planets on their list to study. The James Webb Space Telescope is a very cool tool, but it has limits. It can't detect small, Earth-like planets due to their size. To fix this, NASA plans to launch another tool, the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope. This one will be even better at spotting such planets and life-related chemicals. And also, we have the SETI project. SETI stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. This project has been on a hunt for extraterrestrial creatures since the 1980s. They also believe that we'll find signs of life within the next 10 years. Not so long ago, they started a super big and cool project. It's called COSMIC, and it uses an array of radio telescopes in New Mexico. You might have seen those in the movie Contact. COSMIC allows scientists to listen to hundreds of thousands and potentially millions of star systems at the same time. If there are any interesting signals, scientists can check them right away, instead of waiting for weeks or even months. The signals themselves are often very sudden and short, but COSMIC can detect even the shortest ones that last nanoseconds. COSMIC can also help with other research, like studying mysterious and unexplained fast radio bursts, or even dark matter. This is the biggest and most powerful tool for searching for extraterrestrial life we've ever created. But it's not enough to just listen. Why don't we reach out ourselves? NASA has sent some signals into deep space. In 2002, their deep space network sent a signal to the Pioneer 10 satellite. But there was an obstacle in the path. A white dwarf star, 27 light years away from Earth. If there's a planet around this star, perhaps the signal reached them too. If there are any intelligent species there, we could receive a reply by 2029. The DSN keeps sending powerful transmissions into space. These signals will bump into 222 stars within the next three centuries. Maybe someday we'll receive a reply from somewhere far away. But why haven't we received a response yet? There are about 200 billion galaxies in the universe, each with around 100 billion stars. If just 1% of those stars had one planet, that's still 200 quintillion possible planets. And we can narrow it down even further. 
If the chance of them having life is one in a trillion, that would still leave us a few hundred thousand planets. So, where is everyone? This is a famous question known as the Fermi Paradox. The first possibility isn't that terrifying. It's possible that the universe is full of life, but this life isn't intelligent in our traditional sense. Some planets might have microbes, birds, or space dinosaurs. This is called the Great Filter Theory. It suggests that there are certain filters that life has to overcome in order to become intelligent, and maybe other species just haven't overcome them yet. Think about it. Life on Earth started in the ocean, then crawled onto land, diversified into many forms, went extinct in massive events five times, evolved again, and eventually led to humans. We built societies, developed healthcare, and only then started searching for another life. There's another idea called the Gaian bottleneck hypothesis, which suggests basically the same thing. While it might not be too hard for basic life to start, it's incredibly tough for that life to survive and thrive over long periods. Venus might have had oceans and Earth-like conditions too, but something went wrong. Its oceans boiled away because of a runaway greenhouse effect. Now it's sterile. Mars also had liquid water on its surface once, and both the Moon and Mercury had thick atmospheres for a short time. Meanwhile, Earth has had liquid water on its surface for almost its entire existence. It's super rare and remarkable for a planet to hold temperatures from 32 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit for millions of years. So, maybe it's a mistake to look for intelligent life, especially the one that uses the same technology as we do. It evolved under completely different conditions after all. That's also where the so-called Drake Equation comes in. It's a formula that gives us a chance to calculate the potential of life becoming intelligent on a planet. To calculate the result, we need to know several variables. How many stars there are, how many of them have planets, the chance of these planets having life, and so on. Unfortunately, we don't know these numbers yet, and the result might be insignificant. But let's assume that there is at least one other intelligent species. Why haven't we met yet? There might be many reasons. Maybe they don't think we're interesting enough, or maybe the problem is with us. Perhaps we keep missing their signals, or maybe we miss the entire species itself. The universe is insanely huge and ancient. It's over 14 billion years old. If we compress Earth's entire evolutionary history into a 24-hour day, life starts at 4 a.m. Dinosaurs go extinct at 11.40 p.m. Human-like creatures appear two minutes before midnight. In this analogy, humans have existed for just 77 seconds, and our technology capable of detecting extraterrestrial life is even newer, less than a second. With such vast distances and time spans, the chances of us existing at the same time as other civilizations are slim. If their civilization lasted only a few millennia, we could easily miss them entirely. But that doesn't mean we should give up our search. Scientists were worried that Earth's radio signals had dimmed over time. But a recent study showed that it's actually the opposite. The numbers of our satellites keeps growing, and this makes our planet more detectable. By the end of the decade, we could have 100,000 satellites, making Earth incredibly bright in the radio spectrum. If there is an advanced civilization out there, they will easily spot us even from very far distances. Astronomers are super optimistic about it. There is a high chance they'll find extraterrestrial creatures while you and I are still around. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.